became the latest of the advanced air mobility pioneers to go to Wall Street to fund its dream of transforming public transportation with thousands of electric-powered Evertol aircraft. After the former division of Brazilian aircraft manufacturer Embraer combined its business with special purpose acquisition company Zanite, Eve went public on the New York Stock Exchange, raising just under $380 million. And AIN's reporters were on the trading floor to gauge the mood. Tough market conditions, and possibly also a cooling in investor interest in SPAC backed deals, meant this was less than the projected 500 million or so that had been anticipated. But Eve's approach is different to that of its rivals, and Embraer will be closely involved with its plans as a 90% shareholder in the new venture. This SPAC project was very important for us to raise funds and to, you know, to have a strat strategic support to move on quicker with the, with the development of the EVTO. So we are very happy, even with the tough situation in the market. If it has and will continue to have uh, access to the Embraer infrastructure, extensive aircraft certification manufacturing expertise, also the know-how and experience of uh, air traffic management and uh, no, our IP, and a great team of uh, you know, thousands of uh, experienced engineers. We will provide all the resources to make sure if we will succeed in the market. We have already a, a global network of service and support already established that uh, service supports our aircraft, existing aircraft. Then we just need to adapt to support the EVTOLs in the future as well. EVE aims to certify its four-passenger EVATOL aircraft in 2025 and have it delivered and ready to start earning money in air taxi services during 2026. But along with finalizing the design of its prototype, the company is now working hard to lay the groundwork for this new form of air transport. And that involves cooperating with partners and regulators to build what it calls an ecosystem for advanced air mobility. This includes how the aircraft will be integrated into busy airspace and how its customers will recruit enough pilots for the anticipated high volume of traffic. One thing that you have been doing very strongly is develop concepts of operation and with different players around the globe. So we started with Australia a couple of years ago We launched a concept of operations for, for the Australia market. After that, we've done, uh, we led a consortium in London with different partners from London Heathrow, London City Airport, the regulatory authorities, to create a concept of operation there. Uh, we issued uh, one in Miami recently. We announced our partnership in Japan to create a concept of operation there too, with participation of guys like Zhao, and again with regulatory authority. In Brazil, we've just issued our concept of operation for real, and in that case, we actually have been flown a helicopter, a certified traditional helicopter, with a customer, with a partner in Brazil, with another partner to, to sell the ticket. So we were flying for a month with participation of the Rio International Airport, with different players, the energy side, the infrastructure side, regulatory authorities again, the SEI and the NAC, to create this concept of operation that creates a blueprint for the future. So it's not only about creating something that will be applicable in Rio, but really creating this concept of operation together with the partners and with other players in the ecosystem. There are a lot of discussions going on about how that's going to work in terms of simplified vehicle operations. Mm -hmm. One thing that's interesting though, that could be also an entry point for airline pilots because you can accumulate your flight hours of that type of vehicle and you are designing a vehicle that's very easy to fly, mm -hmm. right? Much simpler than a helicopter or even a traditional aircraft. So the pilot really becomes a manager. That helps to minimize the workload and the training needs for the pilot. And uh, we are still uh, defining exactly solution and working again with the ecosystem to understand the needs exactly, even regulatory authorities, other partners, 
to provide that. When they rang the opening bell on the New York Stock Exchange, EVE's leadership team already had more than 1,800 provisional commitments for EVATOL aircraft, booked by several prospective customers. Business aviation entrepreneur Ken Rickey, who created Xanite as a vehicle to invest in what he sees as the most viable contender in this new sector, feels that EVE's approach is the right one for the long haul. And he expects his business to be part of its future success. We looked at various different ways we could invest the money, right? And when you looked at all the opportunities, there were so many good ideas. But what you find is they're ideas. And when you get to, to this, I don't know necessarily if Eve has the best vehicle. I don't know if in the future it's gonna be the fastest vehicle or the best vehicle. What I do know is it's gonna to come to market. And, and I also know that there's not a first mover advantage. It's like the car industry. There'll be many EV talls that come to market. And, and I think we'll start to parse the niches that they go into. And when we looked across the range of, of companies that had ideas that wanted to be in electrification, we just felt the aerospace experience at EVE was, un, was amazing, okay? So we knew that they knew how to bring something to production, right? Everybody talks about certifying these vehicles. That's very nice, but that's meaningless. You have to produce them over and over again, and you have to distribute them. And I often think that the markets for these, we all tend to think US-centric. We think about them landing at the end of our cul-de-sac and taking us to work in the morning. The reality is, I think, regulations in the US and kind of how we look at local laws, I think the markets might be open elsewhere first. It might be Africa for blood deliveries. It might be cities like Dubai that have you know, less restrictions. And so when you start to think that the market might not be only in the US, then you think about Embraer's worldwide distribution capabilities. How do you get parts? How do you support these things? It's nice to build them, but if people can't operate them, you know, Eve has the most orders of anyone in the business, and that's for a reason, because these companies think they're actually going to get a vehicle, and they know they can support them. We have a company, Halo, that has bought 200 of the units, so we plan to put them into operation. We've already been involved now, today, they're doing, they're, they're practicing. You know, part of what people don't realize is within EVE is this whole air traffic management. They're not only building a vehicle, but they realized early on they had to build the infrastructure for it. And so, uh, while they're built, while they're testing this system, they have them operating in several places, our company has been using traditional helicopters to test the system. We're doing a test case in Chicago next, we did one in Florida. So we're trying different markets to validate and certify the new air traffic control systems that will control these thousands of vehicles that we anticipate are coming in the future. Ricky doesn't buy into the common Evatol startup school of thought that says that aircraft builders should also be aircraft operators. And he also thinks that when it comes to electric aircraft and how they will reshape aviation's future, the best is still to come. We saw many of those models. I, I find that model so challenging, right? Imagine if Boeing, and early on, remember Boeing did have an airline, and they all walked away from that idea. Why? Because the capital, the capital needs to just build these vehicles is so significant. Right? We talked earlier about the amount of money you have to raise to do this. So the capital needs are so significant. Now think if you couldn't sell them, right? It's only capital, it's only capital going out. It's never capital coming in. So when you start thinking about the then capital needs to build the infrastructure to operate them, that's, that's an, it's an enormous bridge to cross, right? It's an enormous hurdle. And also, it doesn't make sense to me because ultimately, what if it's not, I mean, if you, if you don't have, if your vehicle is not the best vehicle out there, not only does it fail in the market, but it fails your whole business plan, right? If you, it, it, so it, it, we actually shied away. There were, there were, when we looked at our investment, we looked, we, want, we didn't want to do something with tilt rotors, so we shied away from tilt rotor vehicles, and we shied away from those vehicles that, those companies that wanted to do the infrastructure also, that wanted to build and operate. You know the other thing that happens sometimes when you operate something that you build is, is because uh, I don't know if you remember that I did Next in Aerospace years ago and then we operated those aircraft at FlexJet for a while. Right. And if you remember when we did that, what I realized is people don't keep checks on each other. The builders of the plane think, oh, well, that's our related company. They'll pay whatever we have to charge them, right? There's no pressure on them because they know the end user isn't, is their own people. 
right? So I, I don't think you get as much challenge to build the vehicle e economically, durability, you know, reliability, and so on. Today, we're just at the beginning. Battery power today can only support about a 4,000 pound vehicle. And we know this has to be bigger than that. So as battery power evolves, these vehicles will change shine shape, right? And so you're like asking me when they invented the stop with camel, like how, what, what, was, that, was that the end of aviation? I mean, this will be the beginning of such a long, you know, such a long future. We'll probably look on that model years from now and go, could you imagine that's what the first vehicles <laughs> looked like? Yeah. AIN's Future Flight Aero platform is closely tracking new developments like this one with daily news updates and a database of new aircraft programs, including independent analysis that cuts through all the hype. Sign up for our free weekly newsletter at futureflight.aero and stay tuned for more video reports like this one.